John, uh, amazing to have you with us. Uh, appreciate you doing this. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Dennis. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Uh, can you tell cool. us a, a bit about how you became an astronaut? Oh, long story, but I'll make it, I'll make it real short. I was uh, in the Navy for about 22 years. I was a naval aviator, test pilot. I dreamed about being an astronaut when I was about eight years old, but I never thought it was something I could do until I was in test pilot school and realized that the people I used to watch on TV, uh, I was in the same, same school, the exact same thing. So if they could do it, why not me? And I applied and I earned a master's to make myself competitive and very fortunate to be selected in 1996. Uh, eight years old, so that's a, a long dream you were chasing there. <laughs> you know, it's a dream. I will have dreams growing up, right? But how realistic are those dreams? And it's not until you do certain things in your life, you meet certain people that, that things kind of fall into place and that dream now becomes reality. Uh, you know, the first Native American uh, to do this, uh, was it hard for you to uh, break new ground? I would say when I got to NASA, they told me I was the first member of a fairly recognized tribe, as we say in the States here, uh, citizen of Chickasaw Nation. And they said, you're the first person we've had in the office uh, like that. And I was, uh, I didn't realize I was in that position, but I found being in that position was an incredible responsibility and, and my need to share my story with others that I never had a role model. I, I take it very serious. Did you have a, a role model yourself uh, when you were going through all your training? Uh, you know, you know, growing up, I think the first time I ever met an astronaut, I was probably in test pilot school. I think one came to uh, to speak at one of the graduations, and but you know, you see them in a distance. You know, I, I saw them on TV growing up, and then I find myself, you know, as an astronaut, you know, in meetings and sitting with people that I watched as a kid that I, you know, that I admired growing up. And now I was in that same, in that same group. And so it was, uh, I found it, uh, uh, <laughs> it was just well, kind of surreal in some respects. And I mm -hmm. realized that, you know, you're just, they just like you are and, and uh, you have the same dreams and aspirations and we all got to do it together. Uh, John, I can barely get myself on the treadmill some days. Uh, how extensive was your, your training for this? Wow, uh, when you initially get selected as an astronaut, you train for about a year and a half just to understand the space shuttle, understand the station, understand the NASA structure. I mean, all these different things you learn. Once you get assigned to a mission, uh, I trained for about two years for the mission. And so the, the guy right behind me, that guy right there, uh, it took me about two years uh, to train for everything I did on the space shuttle as well as doing spacewalk. Were there moments where you wanted to give up or did you know, I mean, you're gonna get a chance of a lifetime here, uh, kept you going? <laughs> yeah, you only get one chance, right? And you mm -hmm. make it one chance or two chances. Uh, you just work hard. And the nice thing is you work with people that are, that are dedicated to what they do. A great group of folks, I had a great crew uh, and had a lot of support from friends and family too. So it made it, uh, I mean, it was hard, but it was realistic. So can you give us a sense, what is it like being in space? <laughs> Every kid's dream, I'll, I'll say that. I mean, one of the things that stands out was uh, one of my mentors, a guy named Jerry Ross, who I worked for as an astronaut, flown in space on the shuttle seven times. He said, at some point in your mission, stop and just take in what you see. Don't take a picture of it. Just realize that this is a unique environment you're in. So matter of fact, the picture behind me on the end of the space station, I was hanging on by a, a thumb and a forefinger looking out into the the vastness of the universe. The very first time in my life, there was nothing between me. I felt like there was nothing between me and whatever else is out there. And it was this incredible, uh, I mean, I felt real insignificant, uh, but it was a very, uh, a moment I'll never forget. It kind of goes into your soul for sure. No kidding. Sounds uh, slightly frightening to me. What, was it scary at all? <laughs> uh, there's one time I thought I wasn't tethered, so that kind of gets your attention. Uh, but you know, yeah. you're working so hard. You forget, you just kind of forget where you are sometimes and you realize, ah, I hang on kind of tight. Um, that was fine. It just, you get so caught up in your work. You don't want to make a mistake. It's not a fear of dying. It's a fear of making a mistake that keeps you uh, focused on your task for sure. Like you said, uh, you know, you only get one or two shots here. Uh, is it hard to retire after such an exciting career? Yeah, well, you know, I, I flew in the shuttle in 2002. The mission after mine was Columbia, so I lost seven friends on Columbia when it didn't come home. That broke up on reentry. Mm -hmm. um, I was training for a space station mission. I was going to command two Russians to the space station for six months, but I have a medical issue with my lower back. I have low bone mass, and so they're afraid I'd, I'd break my back on the Soyuz coming home. So I had a really tough decision. I could stay and fly the shuttle again. We weren't flying the shuttle, and so I made a tough decision. Got offered a job as a commercial test pilot to go into the commercial space industry. And that's what I did. Um, regretted at times, watched my friends fly again, but 
you know, you make decisions and you live with those decisions. And you know, my life has been remarkable since I retired too. So I'm very fortunate. Awesome stuff. Uh, John, what would be your message to young Indigenous people out there that are looking to enter this field? Well, just, you know, believe in yourself and believe in the people that believe in you because people will come along in your life and they will encourage you to do something you may not be thinking about. You know, I got kicked out of college when I was a freshman. I didn't study. I wasn't interested in school. Uh, but I worked for guys in the mountains as a rock climber on a surveying crew. And I saw math and practice for the first time. I saw... I was encouraged by the people I worked with to go back to school, become an engineer, be somebody, you know, work hard. You know, you have to do something out of high school. You can't just expect your high school is going to, education is going to cover. So if there's something you want to do, find somebody doing it, talk to them and go down that path. You may not get to the end goal, but have a fun journey along the way. I mean, I, I got interviewed to be an astronaut and I thought that was the best thing in the world. And I got selected mm -hmm. <laughs> to be one. So uh, yeah, just work hard and believe the people believe in you. Awesome stuff, John. Uh, remarkable stuff. Appreciate you taking some time here to uh, share with us today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dennis. My pleasure. You guys have a nice day.